Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to CAM program a sheet metal part. Uh, so what we have on screen is a really basic sheet metal part. Uh, this is actually a uh, solid that I translated and then converted to a sheet metal, but it can also work on an original sheet metal part as well. As long as it is a SolidWorks model of any type, you can do CAM programming on that. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to do all this using CAMWorks, but everything I'm about to do also applies to SolidWorks CAM. So uh, with the idea that this is a SOLIDWORKS model, first we have to consider though that this is sheet metal. So what I'm gonna do is instead of trying to machine it in its current form, which we could easily do, I wanna show you how the sheet metal functionality yields itself to CAM programming as well. And all that really means is we just need to flatten it. So when I click on flatten, we're gonna get the sheet metal part to look like its flattened version, which is pretty much how you're going to machine this. Uh, this could be a, uh, a plasma table application. This could be a routering application. Anywhere where you're using this sort of flat uh, 2.5D prismatic kind of functionality with a sheet metal part, um, it, it, this, this programming style yields itself to it. Uh, and really all we're gonna do is just use the same sort of functionality you're probably familiar with from uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS, and that is just the recognition of the solid. Once it's flattened, it is just like any other solid. So I'm just gonna go to my CAMWORKS tab, CAMWORKS tab over here as well, and essentially I just need to set up my part. So I'm gonna start by making sure that I have a stock, and because this is sheet metal, it already pretty much has its overall size. So when I get into the stock manager, I can use the bounding box. Once I get the bounding box, if this is already on size, I can just leave these at zero. And you can see that the stock has been defined. So I'm just gonna click the green check mark on that one. I need to give it a coordinate system. So I'll just double click on coordinate system. And again, because this part was probably designed a certain way, I'm just gonna utilize a coordinate system that is the top corner of the part bounding box. But of course, like always, I could easily click on any one of these items and get my coordinate system the way I like. So really all we're trying to do here is just get a coordinate system that is appropriate for the machining that we're about to do. So I'll click on the green check mark and I have a coordinate system. Lastly, before I do anything else, I need that mill part setup. So I'm just gonna right click on my stock, mill part setup, and same as always, I just wanna make sure that that arrow points in that direction. So I have this defined by the front plane, which just ha happens to be above there, but I could also have clicked on this top plane here just to get that arrow to point in my tool direction. So the part has been set up, now I just need to add my operations. And essentially all I'm gonna do is the same thing we always do with really basic two and a half D parts. I can go to extract machinable features, I'll generate an operation plan, and then I'll generate a tool path. So the same sort of three buttons on the top we always use. The difference here is it's on a sheet metal part, but again, all those features still exist as SOLIDWORKS features. So when I click on this, it'll just analyze the part and I'll, uh, I'll let the software take over and figure out all these items. Now, in reality, with a part like this, I probably would have just chosen maybe one of the top corner bottom corner uh, slots and then done a pattern. That'll actually calculate a much faster. Um, it'll be an easier toolpath as well. Um, you can even just prove out the pocket before you go and uh, generate the entire array. Uh, but the purpose of this video, I wanna show you how we can extract all that for me. So I've actually got it set to recognize any of these repetitions and group them together. So we're gonna see that in my feature list, I'll have a whole group for the larger diameter holes, which is six of them a whole group for the smaller diameter holes, which is those six holes that you see on the sides. And then for the entire array of slots, we'll just have a old brown pocket group generated as well. So there'll just be three line items in my feature list for pretty much every feature on here. And then from there, once we've got features, we can generate the operation plan, we can generate the tool path. And in just three clicks, we have programmed our sheet metal part. Typically sheet metal parts could be programmed off of DXF files or DWG files as well. Um, in another video on our YouTube channel, we cover how to do that with uh, those sort of file formats. This is if you're programming it off of a sheet metal part that you programmed within SOLIDWORKS. So if you're already doing sheet metal work with the sheet metal add-on, which is very beneficial for sheet metal design, um, then you can easily just translate that right into your uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS add-on to do the programming. So all in one, uh, software all, in, all under one umbrella, you have the ability to take it right from design to programming. Okay, so we can see that on the side there. 
we have my feature list of the Oberon Pocket Group. Currently highlights it, but if I click this plus sign, we can see uh, pretty much all the pockets are already selected. Same with the whole groups, there and there. So with the features defined, now it's just simply uh, just letting it generate the operation plan. So I'll just click on this button here. And it goes into my TechDB, finds the operations, finds the strategies I apply to those types of features, and then it adds it to my operation list found under my operation tab. And then from here, again, just generate toolpath. And again, from those operations already predefined by my TechDB, I'm just going to generate these toolpaths. And then we can post the code based off of whatever post processor I would have selected for my specific machine. If we take a look at that in simulation, it'll represent our piece of sheet metal. And we can just play through this and we can see it act on our part there. So really simple to go from a sheet metal part into a CAM program because again, once it's a SOLIDWORKS model of any type, we can program on top of that. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main tech line. If you like these videos, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.